Hindsight is a wonderful thing, of oh, course, but 20 years on, what are your reflections of the failure of ANSET? Well, the failure of ANSET, which was the biggest corporate collapse in Australia, 16,000 people uh, out of work, was it, it was the perfect storm. Everything that could go wrong with an airline went wrong with ANSET. It had a legacy of bad decisions going back 20 years before that, uh, made by Sir Peter Abels, who bought aeroplanes at air shows, no business case, no discussion with the rest of the board, just simply said, I want some of those and I want some of these. Then you had the government muddling with it, uh, changing the rules. So they merged Qantas and Australian Airlines. So all of a sudden Qantas, which didn't fly domestically back in 1992, now flies domestically with, with uh, merging us with Australian Airlines. ANSET was able to fly overseas, but they had to start from scratch. They never recovered from that decision. And then the government allowed um, foreign-owned airlines to start operations in Australia and therefore you've got Virgin Blue coming in with Sir Richard Branson. Now we'd played around with low-cost airlines before but they didn't have the brand uh, that Virgin had and all of a sudden it was a very, very different landscape. Mm. So ANSET never ever got lean and mean. Um, Sir Peter Abels tried to create the world's best airline and they did. It won uh, Air Transport World's world's best airline. Right. Uh, but this was a domestic carrier during deregulation. It was sweeping the world and it had a, the, the staff had a culture of excess, egged on by management. Yeah. The staff were passionate, they were loyal, they were dedicated, but they were sadly led. Um, so it was, it was a train wreck, mm. a, a tragic train wreck. And times have obviously changed a lot since then, particularly yeah. to the aviation industry, but still really tough times, of course. It when is. you look at the future of Qantas and, and mm. Virgin at the moment, mm. how are they looking? Well, look, Qantas is one of the world's best airlines, still has an investment grade rating, uh, very well managed by uh, Alan Joyce and, and the team. Uh, Virgin now with uh, Bain Capital backing them, um, they're, they're in good shape as well. So we've got two good airlines. You know, things are tough. Things are really tough. I mean, collectively now, the world's airlines, when you bring in the COVID-19 factor, have never made any money globally. Never made any money. Uh, so it's a very, very tough industry and even tougher today. Um, and the, globally, the industry is uh, set to lose uh, 80 billion US dollars this year, which is about 130 billion Australian wow. dollars. So it's a very tough environment. Jeff, on the program today, we've been talking a lot about vaccine passports mm. and, and what that's going to look like and the complexities surrounding that. For airline travel, what are the issues you see? I mean, obviously, it's one thing to have a vaccine passport that's accepted here in Australia, but when we start travelling overseas again, and that still seems a way off, how do you see that working? Spot on. It, the compatibility of the vaccine passport, which will include your COVID test and your certificate of, of vaccination um, and any other documentation that may require, the compatibility is the biggest single issue facing the industry. Uh, and even within Australia, you know, will your Western Australian, for instance, vaccine passport, it'll get you into Optus Stadium to watch the football, but will it get you into the MCG? Will it get you into the Sydney Cricket Ground? You know, are, are all the states going to be harmonised? And then, of course, the overseas situation, that's a nightmare. And that really, that's the biggest impediment to international travel is the, is the harmonisation of the digital passport. What is the real lived experience of this at the moment? I mean, we know that uh, some countries are a lot free at the moment in terms of their travel abilities. How's well, it working? Well, it, it is working, but travellers have to have have to look forward to an extra hour of processing, both to get on board the airplane and get off. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about 15 to 20 minutes per person in processing the paperwork, because it's all paper at the per moment. Per person. Per right. person. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's just, it's at the moment, it's a nightmare. And in terms of um, having that, I guess, document being uh, signed off on by different mm. customs officials, have we seen examples of people presenting fakes, are people being stopped at borders because they don't have the right thing? I mean, is we've, that We've had a real uh, problem? serious problems with fake documentation from India, uh, Holland, uh, United Kingdom, uh, France, and I believe just recently in Honolulu there was an, uh, a case as well. So, yes, that's why we need it digitised as fast as possible because it's very easy to fake a, a document but not so easy to fake a digitised uh, product uh, on, a, on a 
specific app. So that's something else again. That's why we've got to get it very, very quickly uh, and it has to be harmonised so it's acceptable throughout the whole world. Mm. And in terms of planes flying again around the world, obviously we're seeing a, a, a real drop here in Australia still and, and we're in a bit yeah. of a different situation, but how are things picking up in terms of, of travel across Look, America and the UK? Pick, things Europe? are picking up really aggressively, particularly domestically. Domestic travel now is back to about 80% globally not in Australia. Uh, international is still at about 25% pre-COVID levels because of all the restrictions. Um, but yes, uh, Europe, United States, China, um, domestic travel is really quite robust now and uh, they think that by the end of the year it'll be back to pre-COVID levels domestically. Gosh, okay. Mm. Yep, still seems a way off for us, doesn't it? it? Does. But anyway, yes. we're all looking forward to jumping on those flights again. Jeff, always appreciate you joining us with your analysis. Thank you so much. Pleasure.